Good morning, campers. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> I sleep. Long time. Very good. Like sleep. Okay, we're back. Um, she's she's all dried up. She's she's cured for you know a minimum twenty four hours. Just play it safe. Um, we've got some nice fading effects actually. I was at first disappointed with um, seeing a little bit of yellow through there, but the fact is. You know, these things were generally painted in a hurry in the field, and then natural weathering takes place. The biggest, flattest areas, you know, get the most sunlight and whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's that's going to work out well, I think. And we got minimal amounts of decals here. Just a few crosses and a couple sets of numbers. And again, rivet counters beware. The red numbers look cool, so I'm using them. I don't care if it's accurate to any... Uh, year, or theater of combat, or unit, or whatever. This is what Tamiya gave me. I looked online at some other sticker sheets. I, I don't really... Whatever. That's what's going on there. So, we're going to get these applied uh, via the recommended products from uh, our chosen one, Andy, from Andy's Hobby Headquarters. And we have uh, Mark, Fit, Mark Fit, and Mark Fit Strong. And uh, he likes the Mark Fit Strong. I like it too. They're both very good. You got to be careful though. We get too much Mark Fit and too much working, and the decals can just kind of disintegrate into nothingness on you. And seeing as these Yag Panther kits are getting a bit older, um, I mean, if it first came out in 2007, I don't know when they discontinued it. I don't know when this particular example was popped out of the molds in Japan, but it's. Uh, you know, this is labeled 2007, so these could be almost 13 years old. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I haven't had any problems yet with most decals. I had a brand new Type 10 I was building, and one of the decals just... I left it in the water a tiny bit too long, and it just, it just shredded the pieces on me. I've always found the decals to be a little intimidating or difficult, but don't be scared. Take your time. Keep an eye on them in the water bath. We prefer slightly warm water for this, even though it cools off quickly. If we get done quickly, we'll be good to go. We're going to throw, throw a cross and a number on the side. There we go. Well, I mean, that's a 3 two, one A cross and a number. And we're going to throw one cross on, on that back storage box. So we're going to get that done, and that'll be ERB. So I figure I'll just show you one, one decal. Um, the hardest decals are the biggest decals, or ones that have to go over shapes. Those are a pain in the butt. But, um, <clears throat> our water got cold very quickly, because it's only about 60 degrees down here when I started. So this is not the optimal conditions, uh, for anything. I do have both the heaters going. That 321 Big Boy is still, uh, soaking, and my Mark Fit is starting to dry out. So you just want to liberally coat the area that decal's going to with the mark fit and then once the decal starts to slide off of the paper again the warmer the water the quicker that these suckers are ready to go so if you got like nice hot water um you know 10 seconds sometimes and they're ready to go it's freezing cold water you know a minute almost depending on how big big the sucker is and you really want to be careful because these big ones are the ones that want to tear apart on you and just ruin your frickin' day. Um, just a little hint of anger there, Ian. Calm down, buddy. Calm down. It's just it's just a model. Oh, my gosh. I was like, I started the camera because I'm like, yeah, this thing will be ready to slide off in, in a hot second. And, uh, boy, was I incorrect. Oh, I think, I think we're getting there. Are we getting there? Nope. Not yet. Jeez, yeah, my water's like freezing cold now. We're getting close. I like to tap it. I don't know. I I find agitating it. Uh, it. I just want to agitate something, you know, because the tank's agitating me most of the time. And then once once we're ready to go, we're gonna try to. Son of a. Apparently, we're still not ready to go. I mean, she's starting to slide off. You don't want to soak it so long that it just floats off of the backing. That's when your decal has gone too far, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, warmer water. Definitely a, definitely solid advice there. 
All right, and there we there we are. And be slow and deliberate. Very slow, very gentle. And there we go. So that's half the battle that she's on there. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna soak up any drippy drips, any major drips. Okay, and then we take some more Mark Fit. Now I got this one pretty level on the first try, so that was a lucky shot. Now these big ones, there's a lot of clear decal in between all these numbers. So you want to work your way out from the middle with the mark fit and try to pull or push as many bubbles out as you can. Okay, this is this is the tricky this is the difference between a really well laid decal and a hack job, which was a lot of my former work. Luckily, uh, like we say, weathering covers a lot of sins. Um, that being said, you want to get something to burnish with. I like these Tamiya Fine Point. They're very dense Q-tips. They're, they're not fluffy. They're not furry. They really don't leave much, if any, lint. Uh, so they're nice. So this guy, if you can see, it's really hard to see. But if I just... There's some wrinkles. The decal is wrinkly. It... Oh, I always, whenever I see a couch with a particular type of upholstery, I call it elephant, elephant phallic skin. Um, but we're just going to, we're not applying a ton of pressure, but we just want to work our way out from the middle to the outer edge and just rub out, oh jeez, Ian, <sighs> burnish out, I guess, it would be the better, more safe term. I want to burnish out those wrinkles. So, oh yeah, this is satisfying work once you see the wrinkles start to go. There's always going to be a little texture just because of uh, any texture of the plastic underneath and then the semi-rough texture of uh, your paint job. You know, all these airbrushed multiple layers of primer and paint, shadow and highlight coat. You know, we already got one, two, three four, minimum four layers plus clear coat, five layers of sprayed on product underneath this decal. Very important guys, clear coat the tank before applying the decals. Um, not only will the decal glue potentially have a little side effect on, on your clear, the mark fit really it can really screw it up pretty bad. Now we've burnished her down really well and we're just gonna dabby dab, dabby dab dab over that, okay? And now, there's your decal. Okay, and they're lined up pretty well, I have to say. And you can see there's a little bit of a sheen. See, from the plastic in between the letters. That's gonna be gone once we uh, dull coat over that. Super critical. Andy has said it, a few other online modelers have said it. I'm sure the forums know this. But, if you want to guarantee yourself a screwed up day, you put this over your decals. Tamiya Dull Coat is a flat clear TS-80. It's fantastic. It's a great clear coat. Um, how Tamiya managed to make their own clear coat formulation that eats their decals? I mean, it's like it's like it's like throwing throwing a tomato in a pot of battery acid. It just destroys them. The Tusters Dull Coat testers, you know, they they're in the modeling industry for decades and decades. Their dull coat does not screw with water slide uh, decals. It doesn't. It doesn't chew them up. So once we're done, once these are dry, I like to give them at least an hour or two in a warm, dry environment to let them fully set, so uh, they can they can be set. And uh, we then just hit them with a light to moderate misting of uh, dull coat over the top, <clears throat> and we're good to go. This tank's starting to look a little more like a tank. Um, so since we have to give these guys time to dry. Um, we could futz with, you know, rusting these pipes up, but honestly, I want to see a friggin' fully completed operational tank. That's no moon. No. That's no pillbox. It's moving. Yes, guys, it is a Yak Panther. So what we're going to do in the interim... Oh, boy. Now... I like the I like I like the exciting parts of the build, you know, major things going together, major parts of paint happening. Um, 
weathering, I love the final effects, but dear God, all these wheels, <laughs> all being weathered. Um, this has got a lot of wheels, you know, cause they, they interleave, so this thing has more road wheels than any other tank I've ever built, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna get weathering. You wanna see the perfect how-to on this. You look at Andy's Hobby Headquarters, Yag Panther, you know, 1 uh, static model build, part two. I mean, he does a beautiful job. I'm going to attempt to do 50% as good as he has, because 50% as good as Andy... In my book, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to post a picture on Facebook or the forums. People are going to be like, oh, my God, it looks so great. Oh, my God, do you, do you want to do tanks? Do you want to do for someone else? You know, it, I'm, listen, everybody probably doesn't like to do the painting and weathering as much as some people do. I mean, there's a lot. But um, <clears throat> either way, we're going to get these things just look black. I mean, green my left foot. But... I guess in the right light they could look green. I have no idea. Either way, we're going to weather them up, and we will be back. I'll probably save one wheel to do on camera. All right? That's after I've warmed back up again, because, you know, you don't build a tank every day. So unless you're some tank-building, you know, master who just stays at home and does that for a living. But we'll be back. Okie dokie. So what we got is our chipping compound. We've used in previous videos. It's brown, black, black, brown, and red. Um, Andy shows you how to make that. So what we've done is we just lightly chipped up. Please focus. Okay. So we we did some chipping on here. It's really it's just a little a little spongy guy, and uh, we blotted in blotted in the paint and blot most of it off there. We can test chip on the back of the wheel because we're not going to see that and then it's it's literally it's it's just just tappy tap tap I like to th this this inner wheel is going to be you can even drag it a little bit when you're doing that and then because that really gets worn away the track horns are running on it um, and you just you don't want to go I mean you can go bonkers it's fine with me I, I've done some tanks where I've weathered them to the point where I was just like, wow, a little extreme there, huh? But sometimes it looks, it's just different. You want to be a little unique. It gives a little more depth to the wheel. I mean, that's it. Just, just a little tapping, tapping. Now, the easy thing is doing, doing the dark yellow stuff with the chipping. Um, that's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it's harder on darker colors. So what you got to do on the darker colors is sometimes, uh, and I don't do any really brush chipping. Um, I save my brushes for like streaking grime and stuff. But yeah, you just just get her a little, ah, yeah, baba, get her a little dirty, uh, and very a little dab will do you with the chipping compound, and you just tappy tappy tappy. And a little extra on the drive sprockets. We like to get those. You almost use the sponge like dry brushing at a point, and we're gonna do a little metallic of some form in the weathering process on these. Rust and oil and all that good stuff. I didn't need to go crazy on here. Just get that back up into the view. Yeah, nice. And you can you can press a little harder as your sponge dries out. You're sponge worthy. Okay, Seinfeld. Abba. Whenever I do this while I'm on camera, I look like the biggest klutz. Um, it's really just showing reality. Um, no, I'm, I'm a little klutzy. Now for these dark wheels. Uh. We could go a few different ways. The dark chipping doesn't really show up so well on stuff like this. So sometimes you'd want to use something a little lighter. Um, I forget what the hell color I made here. But it's a it's a greenish color. So we're going to test this out on there. Um, on the brown, what we're doing is we're not going to use a brown chipping because it's going to be kind of redundant. We're going to use our track black to chip up the brown wheels. 
So this way you have some contrast. We're gonna you hit these with, with black, almost black chipping, grayish black chipping, and we'll hit the dark green wheels with light green chipping. That way you get some something going on that you could notice, some speckles and spots. All right, we'll be back. Okay. Um, so while listening to some uh, Spandau Ballet, Spandua Ballet, Spandua, Spandau, how do you pronounce that group's name anyway? We screw everything up in New York City with the way we pronounce stuff. You know, uh, uh, Cadillac Fleetwood Broham. You know, Bra well, it's Brom, dude. It's Brom. Fleetwood Brom. I'm like, no, nah, it says Broham. Broham. Um, so these things, these are the first set of tires. I love my tires. Everyone knows how much I love rubber tires. Um, usually I just, I just get a good firm purchase on this and just rip it apart and it comes right out. These seem to really need you to... Uh, want to cut them. Now, I think Andy was cutting them all the way. All I did was do a little starter cut, and then, whoop, up, they zip right out perfectly. And then put the clean side facing out, just in case you have a little, little excess flashy rubber inside. And then, eh, they stretch on pretty nicely. Look at that. I did one of the inners. Those are cool tires. See a very thin exposed part there and when those things are meshed together once they're all all rusted and oily grimed and and pigmented eh, they're gonna look freaking fantastic okay so i've got a, a, a bajillion more tires this vehicle also has hey ha -ha, the most rubber tires of any tank i've ever built this thing i mean i love my rubber tires but to me is like oh oh mr complaining you didn't get rubber tires with your js2 you want rubber? We'll give you rubber. I got your rubber right here. All right, fat boy. Get to tiring. All right, we'll BRB. Holy crap, all the guys. This thing's got more wheels than I've got excuses. After putting all the rubber on these things, I am just dead tired. But um bum Okay, couldn't couldn't help it. Had to throw that in there for the pun fans. Um, beautiful. I love them. They're great. Um, I did determine I could just rip out uh, the rubber flash, uh, just using sheer brute force, but I reserve that forearm strength for other household activities. Uh, get your mind out of the gutter. I meant playing tug-of-war with the dog. Jeez, guys, I don't know who I'm talking to over here. You're all, you're all sickos. Um, yeah, so you can rip them apart. It's just more work than necessary. Just that quick little starter cut, and they, they come right out. And they look fantastico. Look at that beauties, aren't they? These are going to look great, contrasting, and interwoven like that. Ah, oh, it's going to be awesome. Um, I didn't do too many of them green, as you can tell, because they're just dark and boring, um, as far as the weathering goes, but the brown ones are pretty nice. Tan, I don't know why. Why does it, why do we all love the desert yellows and tans and buffs and khakis so much? Because they look awesome with weathering on them. I mean... It's just like magic. You just dab a few drips of blobs of paint here and there. They already look good enough to pass off. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna dull coat all of these to lock in uh, the acrylic uh, chipping, and then we're gonna move on to some of our some of our enamel effects. Uh, what else do I got here? Where is all my? Oh, it's in the fourth drawer. Yeah. Um, we've got a bunch of different things. Uh, what is this? Rain marks? We're not going to use... I don't know about the rain marks. Uh, slimy grime. Nope. That was for the, uh, 551 Sheridan. Oxide rust. Definitely going to use some rust. Uh, oil stains. We're going to use some oil stains. Uh, this is slimy grime. Dark, not needed for this. Brown splash mud. Nah. Eh. I'm not gonna mud this one up. I'm gonna dust it up and dirty it up. I'm not gonna not gonna mud it up. Dark green wash. Uh, for a green tank, this is great. This has some green. I might use some of this dark green wash on the wheels. Let's see about that. We've got desert dust. And I remember, you know, uh, someone will call me out. I said, oh, I was going to do a DAC tank. No, you know, I just said, eh, screw it. Just do whatever I want. Um, I don't think we're going to need any 
for light and dark armor. Ah, uh, maybe. Eh, maybe not. And then we've got other stuff here. We've got pigments. We've got burnt umber. Uh, dark steel. We're going to use that for the inner road wheel's edges. Uh, light sienna. The universe's most favored used pigment. And Andy's, I think, also. He uses that more than anything. Uh, dark yellow ochre. Eh. I don't know. Uh... Natural iron oxide. Well, maybe dark steel iron oxide. Um, I like the metallic. The dark steel is definitely a little more metallic. We're going to go with that. Um, we use that on guns and stuff too, little machine guns. Uh, burnt. Oh my god, how much, how much burnt umber do we have? We have a couple of burnt umbers. Um, uh, European earth. There we go. That's what we were looking for. Uh, since this is in European, we have desert dust as well, but this isn't a desert tank. Got a little jar of mud in a pot. I don't know what this stuff is. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's mud. Um, we're gonna save this for another project. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but you'll, well, you'll like it, I'm pretty sure. Um... So yeah, well, I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, let's let's put away, put put the, the side, the chipping, and all these other things, and we're gonna get a little flat clear and everything here. We're gonna lock in our uh, decals and our chipping here, because uh, I don't want to chip over the decals without a little clear first. So we'll be back uh, after this short announcement from our sponsors. We don't have sponsors. Someday I have like. A hundred and something subscribers, you know, if we times that by a thousand, um, maybe people will start sending me stuff. I don't know. I'll build anything you ship me. Um, but, uh, again, tiny, 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 and I don't do this to get free stuff. I just do this for my own ego. No! No, it's my own, it's my hobby, and, uh, apparently people enjoy watching me flail about building things and talking, well, some people. Some people don't find me very entertaining. Yeah, it's okay, you know. I've I've met a few. Uh, it happens from time to time. But yeah, a flat flat here and, and blah blah blah. We'll be back. Okay, while we're waiting for some other stuff to uh, dry, namely my dull coat on my wheels and uh, uh, decals, <clears throat> we're gonna start weathering up these tracks. I like having the tracks um, delinked like this and open. We could just zoom zoom, just carpet bomb the whole thing. So I started applying. Basically, our NATO black, some brown, and some red uh, chipping compound. This is sort of, this is all, and this, this is 100% Andy's formula. Okay, so don't even think I came up with this. You could, I misted the bottom of the tracks. It's really hard to tell the difference. It's very subtle. It goes from this deep, slightly metallic black to a little hint of brown on there. Just, just the lightest whiff of brown. And we're going to flip them over. And uh, we, we basically we just, we just load up the airbrush and uh, we, we give her a, a misting. This is going to be almost the end of my batch here. I'm going to have to make another batch sooner or later. I'm going to fill that airbrush up, airbrush cup up pretty full. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, we want to just a, see, just a mist. So we want to we wanna get into, the, as he says, all the nooks and crannies. Um, And just, it doesn't have to be, it's not a heavy coat. It's very subtle. Okay. This is just one of the 17 layers of weathering. And I mean, you know, I, I usually will pull up one of Andy's videos. He has a track weathering video. It's like eight minutes long. Nice, nice, quick, easy, easy to digest video. Very straightforward. And he goes over all of the herbs and spices that go into Kentucky Fried Tank Tracks, uh, a la Andy's, uh, beautifully done tracks. <clears throat> now, after this brownish wash, okay, uh, sorry about the air compressor, guys. She's 
fairly quiet, but um, I'm gonna get like get all the angles of the dangles. Okay, you can see we browned them up a little bit. A little bit of a little bit of squishy scratching. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna go back afterwards and 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 screw up whatever we do a little bit to make it look even more uh, battle worn. I didn't need all that damn paint. Dope. Oh. All right. Um, I gotta hit these with some clear, and then we'll get to the weathering. Be back. Okay. Well, the the clear is drying on the tracks. Uh, I figured we weather up these wheels. So we got some AK White Spirit. We got our light sienna pigment and our streaking grime and uh, again not my recipe but we just dip the brush in there and just give the wheel just a, a slick of that white spirit and we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll deposit some streaking grime here and there there's no real there's no science to this just you know just get some some globs going here and there okay now that that's done I like to spin the wheel a little get a little realistic spread of that um, optional optional step but I, I seem I don't know and then we're just gonna kinda pull pull it around a little bit and dab just to try to not let it pool up anywhere in particular okay and after that Take a big fat brush. I use the big fat brush. You could use a skinny brush. Um, okay, we just tap it into the pigments. They stick to they stick to the brush head like the Dickens, and uh, we just start patting this stuff in there. That's it. It looks like utter crap right now, but we're gonna let it all dry and then dry brush it off, and it'll look fantastico. And then we add more. But uh, garage door just opened, so all my heat's escaping, and my wife is uh, making her ingress. So, I'll be right back. Oh, just... <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> seltzer. Fresh seltzer. Very, very fizzy. So, we ended on this note, and now you see they've they've dried, basically. There's still some that are a little moist. Moist. Hear that, people? The M word. Um, And then what you do is you just take a very soft brush, and you just dust them dust them off and you want to you're going to knock out a good amount of that pigment so you go from this to this so you know we just you know you're going to you're losing a lot of the pigment uh, you waste a ton of pigment doing this if someone's that concerned over pigment waste you know I don't know call Greta Thunberg or something I don't know what the pigment's made of or its environmental impact to the planet <clears throat> but once you're depigmented, you still have a, a bunch of pigment in there. Okay, you can go back and then add some more stuff. So let's say we want to do a little dab of uh, of some oil stains. Ooh, look at that! Um, we need another another small brush. Break out a couple of new ones. Ooh, fancy, fancy little pointy brushes. Um, so we can do, and I'm gonna just do one real quick on camera, and that's that's it, you know. And then the oil stains are really cool because they dry and look like actual. If we got any on the brush, well, now we definitely have on the brush, and we want to, you know, just just little dab, little dabs will do you. couple of those here and there I love the oil stain effect it looks very good and just 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 a little bit here and there you know there's, there's grease in these there bearings and we can spin it a little to get it to naturally fling Okay, and we got some oil stains here and there, and we can we can streak them a little bit. Uh, 
I mean, it, it's really just, and you don't, you don't want to do every single wheel the same. And then on top of that, you can do, go ahead and throw a little, throw a little rusty pigment. Um, you know what? Let me get my streaking grime brush cleaned off a little bit here, and we can do a little, little rusty wash. Do a dab or two of rust. I should use a finer, finer brush. I do a dab, dab or two of the, the rusty stuff, and at that point, we want. An enamel thinner, the enamel thinner brush, but as dry as possible. We want to kind of blend and tap. And uh, and this brush is way too dirty, so now I'm getting all sorts of weirdness going on here. If that happens, do not freak out don't lose your collective poo because then back with the pigments and now that we have it moist again we can throw a little more pigment over it and then knock a little off <clears throat> actually I probably should have put the rust on before the pigments but eh, you know you could do things either way uh, and we'll let that dry again so yeah, I mean, and you want to do every wheel a little different. Um, you know, Andy's formula works great. Just kind of follow it, and you can't you can't screw it up too bad. Um, the rust is a bit extreme on these tan wheels. I don't think I'm going to use any more of that. The oil stains, however, were quite nice. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, hey, clean off that new brush. Don't get it all dirty. We're going to oil stain around the nuts... No, oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm all full of full of one-liners today, apparently. Um, you know, little little drippy drips of of oil seeping out of the bearings there. That's what we want. I don't want too much to get on there at one shot, but a little bit, a little bit of oil staining, and then we'd ah. Uh... Not that the wheels are spinning that fast in real life. The tank would be doing 50 miles an hour. But yeah, we can... There we go. And it splattered a little bit out. And we can... put a little... a couple dabs here and there. At the bottom of the wheel. Sorry, I'm off camera. Jeez, I suck at that. You know, and uh, you can do whatever you want with whatever, it's your model. Uh, drag them down. Drag them down. I usually use this for the fueling areas on tanks. Um, where the Where the gas caps are. This stuff looks extra good because most tanks run on some form of fuel. <laughs> it's usually some kind of petroleum-based product. Um, and then, you know, we can we can go back and we can... We've got so much pigment on the paper here. We can repigment a little bit over some of the oil stains. I keep doing this. I keep... I'm right here. I mean, that's close to being good. Tappy, tappy. Now it's like muddy oil. So again, let it dry. I'm basically going to just brush all these guys clean for the most part and be kind of happy with it. I may get into a little extra goop here and there, but we don't really need to. You know, we've got enough um, pigments and stuff that they're going to look good. And then now the tracks are going to be ready for their weathering, and that's that's where... I normally don't go through the trouble. This is the first set of tracks that I'm really going to do the, the full recipe from Andy on. Usually the tracks, I don't do a hell of a lot with tracks. I mean, especially if they're the stock tracks. Um, 
I might, you know, hit them with a little something or other, but but not a ton. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll get back to that in a minute. Beer beep. Okay, boys, we we've been quite busy. We brushed off all of our road wheels, um, and hit them with the flat clear. They're drying now. Now I'm working on the tracks. I'm on the back side of the track. So here you can see, you know, the track black with yeah, the hint of brown we put on it before. Fast forward, Andy's style is uh, Desert Dust uh, Vallejo Model Wash. And just get that brush in there. And I'm like, he goes much slower than this. This is the back side of the track. so I mean, you'll see a little bit of it, but it's not going to be like the prominent on display part. So like, I'm doing about one third of this at a time with a good heavy loaded brush. And uh, we, we, we get it wetted up. And I like to start at the far end because that dries quicker. So we're just going to tap, tap, tappy, tappy, tappy our uh, light sienna in here. It's, it's really supposed to just make it random. If you get big piles, don't worry. We're brushing this off after we're done. You can see I did some of those stowage track links up top. They're extra. I added a little rust to them because they're just, they're just sitting around not getting, not getting driven on. Okay. So we got that, and I got a little European earth over here, um, and really just, just the tiny, tiniest width of European earth. Um, it gives, gives it a little bit of a, of a ready thing. And, and that's that. Um, you know, I'll be back. I'm going to do the last part of the back of these tracks, flip them over, and do a little more. All right, be right back. Okay, well, back side of the tracks was easy. Um... The front side, outside, man, these suckers soak up the desert dust wash as well as the pigment. They just eat this stuff like it's like a fat kid on cake over here. Um, it's uh, they're better saying it's, it's like a Bronx kid on pizza. Um, you know, we, we try to get. I'm trying to get as far as I can at once. It's it's hard. You know, you got to manage this. It's like buffing a car. You got to do it in sections. Um, so we, we get that stuff good and, and, and slather it in there, um, and then just, just, just powder that in there. You may have to clean off your pigment brush every now and then with like a, uh, oh, excuse me. I might have to, you know, rub it off with a microfiber, rub it off, Jesus. Oh, watch your mouth again. Uh, you know, but, but get the goop off with like a microfiber towel or something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, the... the the more tready the tracks are, the more aggressive the tread pattern, uh, the more they eat the pigment and the wash. And you can see this back one's already sort of drying out. Um, but yeah, yeah, I got another another 10, 15 minutes of this to go. And then uh, I don't know if I'm going to do the inside of the... These guys are going to be stowed facing out. So we really don't need to do the backsides. Um, we'll probably just... just leave it, um, get a little, uh, do I have any rust pigment? I don't know. I should, but I, I might not. Um, either way, I'm gonna, you know, get, get this finished up. Then what we gotta do is just brush them off, clear them, and these are metal tracks. So I'm gonna drive, you know, like when it's new, I'll drive it around the driveway, and that'll scrape off the teeth and show some bare metal, uh, make it look, you know, more realistic. Uh, if we weren't doing that, and they were plastic tracks, we could use a metal polish, or we could take some sandpaper, since they're metal tracks, we could take some fine-grained sandpaper and just go over it lightly to expose a little metal. But, uh, I'll be back. More hard work. Uh, <laughs> uh, dusty. You probably should wear a, a paper face mask or something during the pigment thing. Um, so either way, here we go. Here's the final product. Now this was just the desert dust wash and mostly just the light sienna pigment. And then what we do is you let it dry and then I found actually these treads are very aggressive. These are like ice treads. Um, it just rub back and forth with the toothbrush and then and then you know whack it back and forth with the fairly stiff brush and then I just blew out any remaining dust with the uh, with the airbrush which is a huge friggin mistake uh, health wise. But uh, excuse me, it cleared off the dust. So now what we got to do is I'm going to let these dry a little bit more over on the side. I added a little bit of uh, extra rust to these guys. I don't know how well it shows up. 
but they're gonna look pretty good. Um, I may use a little bit of panel liner on them afterwards once they're on the tank maybe, just to give them a little more depth. But yeah, this was tedious. Like if you're gonna go through this much trouble, I mean, Andy does it all day, every day. It's his job, you know, and he's good at it. But dear, you gotta have some uh, wherewithal and determination to uh, see this through to the end, especially weathering both sides of 1 16th scale tracks. Like, holy mother of tracks. It's a lot of a lot of tracks. Um, either way, I think this video is running really long. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and then the next episode, we'll get to the, the tank itself and, and doing, doing some effects underneath the chassis. Just minimal, just so if you happen to peek under there, it looks dirty. And then we'll start chipping and, and, and streaking grime and weathering and, you know... Uh, uh, panel lining and all that good stuff on the upper um, so that's it for now guys this has been one of the most tedious things I've gone through for a tank I spent a lot of time weathering my Abrams I wasn't recording at all that took months I'm condensing this all into like you know a couple days do a video and a couple days do a video a couple days do a video you know it oh boy it's it's marathoning but we're gonna get this done and this is part seven? Okay. Uh, see you see in part eight. All right. Later, guys.